Okay, get ready. Now we're gonna get into the nitty gritty of sleep. So when you sleep, your body goes through a few distinct phases. We call them stages. There's stage one, stage two, slow wave sleep, and rapid eye movement sleep, or REM sleep. Each stage does something different to your brain and your body. If you miss a specific stage or you don't get enough of any one, you miss out on all the unique benefits each has to offer. So let's take a few minutes to understand exactly what happens with each stage of sleep. When you're awake, your brain is active, with neurons constantly firing and processing all the data it receives. Sensory data, emotional data, cognitive, and more. If you were to monitor the brain's electrical activity, like you do with an electroencephalogram, or EEG, it would show up as a bunch of tightly clustered, low amplitude waves zigzagging rapidly. But when you settle down to sleep, your mind and body begin an amazing transformation and enters a multi-stage process that's essential for memory and learning, health and wellness, creativity, and more. If you were to watch someone sleeping over a period of time, you'll notice a repeatable pattern that happens approximately every 90 minutes. And this pattern represents a cycle of sleep. Let me take you through it. So sleep begins with stage one which is that hazy, hypnotic phase between being awake and being full-on asleep. As you enter stage one, everything in your mind and body begins to slow. The randomness of your brain activity starts to synchronize, and the neurons start to fire across your brain in increasing unity. Your peripheral body temperature, the temperature near your skin, drops. Your heart rate and metabolism slow. Your eyes start to gently move from left to right beneath your eyelids and often you experience little involuntary shock waves called myoclonic jerks, which can make you feel like you're falling and can sometimes actually wake you up, but more often send you deeper into sleep and into stage two sleep. During stage two, your brain starts sending out little signals known as sleep spindles, and these spindles are believed to help sort through your newly learned memories, so they actually stick. Since sleep is a time when you can shut out the rest of the world, this period may be an optimal time for your brain to go over all the experiences of the day and begin the process of strengthening connections between neurons. By strengthening these connections, you're firming up your memories and making them resilient to forgetting. From stage two, you drift even deeper into sleep. Your brain slows further. The temperature inside your brain cools, the blood vessels constrict, and you enter into a deep, dark world of stage three, also known as slow wave sleep. It is named for the notable increase in the extremely slow delta waves that show up on the EEG, which signify that the majority of the neurons in your brain are synchronizing to a very slow rhythm. During slow wave sleep, you're less susceptible to waking up from noises. It will now take a loud bang or the sound of particular relevance, like your name or the cry of your baby, but oddly not the cry of someone else's baby, to pull you out of this deep trance. Your breathing becomes shallow and you actually take in less oxygen. Slow wave sleep is an essential period of repair. All the physical benefits of sleep occur now. Your body starts to increase production of growth hormone and decrease production of stress and hunger hormones. These hormonal changes bring your tissues and organs back to peak levels and help you metabolize fat and carbs, turning them into energy for your cells. In addition, slow wave sleep continues the process of memory consolidation started in stage two. Eventually, your brain begins to emerge from the depths of slow wave sleep and finds itself back in stage two sleep. But after a few minutes of stage two, everything changes. The slow, deep breathing becomes less regular. Your heart rate and your body temperature, your blood pressure, they all start to fluctuate. And your neurons pick up pace and start to resemble the same random pattern as wakefulness. Your eyes start to dart back and forth beneath your eyelids. And during this period of rapid eye movement, you experience surreal and vivid dreams. During REM, your brain emits chemicals called neurotransmitters that are essential for learning and memory and for making connections between your recent experiences and all of your prior knowledge. 
This stage is especially important in helping cultivate higher order cognitive skills, like finding patterns in complex information or coming up with creative solutions to difficult problems. Without REM, eureka moments are fewer and farther between. But with it, the brain might experience true breakthroughs in its thinking. So let me summarize for you. Stage two restores energy to your body, helps cultivate alertness, and promotes memory and learning. Slow wave sleep repairs your body and helps reduce the harmful effects of stress. Slow wave sleep also dampens your urge to eat foods high in sugar, clears your mind, and helps increase the strength of new memories. And REM sleep helps you make connections between new thoughts and ideas and your entire associative network that you've built up over your lifetime. REM sleep strengthens your higher order thinking abilities and can actually improve your creativity. The mind and body work optimally when you're able to get a good mix of all three. The mind and body suffer when you don't get enough. Of course, getting enough is well within reach. During nighttime sleep, how much of each stage you experience depends on several factors, including when you go to sleep, how long you sleep, the amount of chemicals such as caffeine and alcohol that you've had in your body at the time of sleep, and more. But for most of us, there are factors at work that precondition us to get more slow wave sleep in the first half of the night and more REM sleep in the second half. This chart shows a typical allotment of sleep stages through an average night's sleep. If your sleep pattern is similar and you go to sleep around 11 and wake up around 7, you'll likely get almost five hours of stage two sleep and an hour and a half of both slow wave sleep and REM sleep. But if you choose not to sleep until three in the morning, even if you get a full eight hours, you might be depriving yourself of important slow wave sleep and getting a lot more wacky REM induced dreams in the process. This concept is a critical one to grasp. When you choose to sleep plays a huge role in what you get out of sleep. That point will become very important when we look at the role of naps. I believe that learning how to nap strategically is a superpower within each of us just waiting to be unlocked. And in a few lessons, I'm going to show you how to do just that.